Welcome to episode 34 of The Rebel Rebel, a podcast for creative rebels and entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Michael Dean Dargy. In this episode, Callum Lycan joins me in Kensington studio to talk about his life's work, telling stories. Yeah, that's right. That's his job. Callum is a storyteller hailing from Edinburgh, Scotland, who now calls Canada home and spends his time traveling the world, you guessed it, telling stories. Seriously, it's his job. The Rebel Rebel is brought to you by Make More Creative and Drop Bear and Panda Productions. Check them out at www.dropbearandpanda.tv. Don't forget to subscribe to Rebel Rebel on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play Music, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Now over to the show with Callum Lycan. Welcome to the Rebel Rebel. I'm sitting here in Kensington studio with none other than Callum Lycan. Hi there, Michael. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for braving the cold to come down here today. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty bitter out there. Yeah. It, it. What is it like? Minus twenty five today. Something like that. It's all I know is the beard yeah. starts to crisping up. Oh uh, yeah. So it must be cold. <laughs> uh, uh, no kilt today. No. No. I. Uh, I made the mistake once of coming to a photo shoot for you in my kill in the, a small blizzard about minus 25 and decided never again. Yeah, smart man. <laughs> smart man. For the people out there that have no idea who you are, and I can't imagine there's anybody in Calgary that doesn't know who you are now, but who are you? What do you do? Uh, well, I am a storyteller by trade. Huh. Uh, I travel the world telling stories, uh, myths, legends, uh, doing public speaking. You know what? It's it's weird. Uh People ask what I do now and I get this uh, blank look in my face because I realise that my business has become this weird fourfold thing. Uh, So I do the storytelling. Yeah. I do the uh, business development side of things, which is, I say business development, I call it narrative strategy, which is helping people develop their story, training their staff in the concept of storytelling for sales, etc. Nice. I have my studio at home. Mm -hmm. Uh, Here we are in your lovely studio. I have mine as well, where I do podcasting, radio work, voiceover and CD creation. Yeah. And then I also now have decided, because, you know, I got bored, um, I'm going to set up my own walking tour company in Calgary. Nice. Oh, okay. So we'll put links to all your stuff in the in the liner notes. Oh my god. Okay. So where do you start? Uh, you came to us. Uh, people will be able to tell right away that you're not from here. No, I'm Australian. <laughs> right. Yes. No. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, but you used to do this type of work in Edinburgh. That is correct. Yeah. I um, developed as a storyteller. And when I say that, I mean in the kind of purer sense of traditional tales, yeah. myths and legends, storyteller in uh, Edinburgh at the Scottish Storytelling Centre. So uh, it's a profession, right? Like yes. this is like you get training and you learn how to do this. It's not yeah. you just walk up and be like, oh, I really like that. <laughs> Please don't do that, Michael. <laughs> Never we've again. Had, we've had words about that. Uh, yeah, I actually went through an apprenticeship scheme in cool. uh, Scotland to do this. Um, after kind of working as a tour guide for another company, I really discovered I enjoyed telling stories, wanted to find out more about it, and then discovered there is a purpose-built place in Edinburgh for wow. storytelling. And went and did some workshops, went on to their apprenticeship scheme, and then... The rest is a story that keeps continuing. Oh, <laughs> how lovely. <laughs> uh, so you came to Canada yes. right, fairly recently, mm-hmm. uh, right? And uh, you've done uh, some fringe stuff. You've gone and uh, you do stuff at um, like bookstores, at schools. I mean, you yep. you get around telling your telling your telling your tall tales. Yes, I get around, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, I um I've been really lucky since coming to Canada. I've done a lot of events, as you say, festivals, yeah. fringes, uh, a lot of medieval fairs and historical events, yeah. schools and libraries, and you know, just wherever anybody wants a good story or wants to hear me. Yeah, well, that's cool. And you have got, I want to say, a couple hundred stories that you can pull out at a moment's notice. I often boast that I have about 300 locked away in my head. Uh, He's got a giant head. They're they're in there, but what I've realised, if I'm going to be honest, is I need little triggers now sometimes to get a story pulled out. There are stories that I could tell immediately, but... Quite often when I'm doing a show, I've got into this habit of asking the audience for a theme or a suggestion or emotion. Right. And what they throw out will trigger something, you know, it'll right. kind of like get some, and it's like, oh, yeah, I've got a story for that. And right. then 
I will tell them a story. And it's a nice way of doing it, I think, because it helps the audience really connect and it lets them see that it's not scripted. Yeah. It's not, you know, uh, pre-created as a show. It gives them more of a spontaneous kind of feel and also gives them a story that they may want to hear. Right. You know, more of a connection to what they've suggested. How long are your stories typically? Like, oh, a story can be anything from, uh, you know, a 30 second to a minute anecdote up to... 40 50 an hour really you know what it, it's there is no limit yeah on average i'd say my stories uh the longest stories i've got could be 20 to 25 minutes right now uh so we helped produce your first cd that called is called scottish bedtime stories we did a cd release party at loose moose theater and i remember one of the people in the audience coming up to me afterwards saying almost purring i could listen to him for hours <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, something that I get told a lot. Yeah. Um, even recently, my feedback, I did a show in Fru and Edmonton and the feedback had similar. Yeah. But my favourite one is, oh, we could just listen to him read the telephone book and we'd be happy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to probably do that one day. Yeah, just I'm just going to do on a your fringe podcast. show. Yeah. Oh, oh no, maybe show. even a fringe show. I'll just, you know, Callum Ligon reads the telephone directory. Wow. <laughs> I can see that being really hilarious for about a minute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, come on, you get the guy, the old man dressed as a gorilla, yeah, dressed as an old man in a rocking chair, mm. reading a newspaper, and that all they do is rock for an hour, and people sit and watch that show. Wow, that is very fringy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I, that's storytelling. So what are you doing right now for storytelling? Uh, at the moment, I am uh, developing a new CD, as uh, you know. <laughs> uh, I believe it's going to be a Viking CD. Yeah, and I have plans, actually, which we'll discuss later. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I'm about to head off to BC for a couple of Scottish shows that have been booked for out there. Nice. And then this season, it's pretty much more the same. Uh, medieval fairs like Brooks, uh, Okotoks Horde at the Hives coming up for the, with the Vikings. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm out at the Laughed House, potentially out at Viking. So, yeah, pretty much more of the same. But then with the added challenge of trying to develop the walking tour right. company in Calgary, I am also hoping to be a little bit more home-based. And uh, this has come about because last year in June, I think I clocked up about 15,000 kilometres in one month on the road. Oh, my God. And I'm no spring chicken anymore. <laughs> no, you sh uh, certainly are not, sir. <laughs> <laughs> words. We will have words. <laughs> that's right. Well, that okay, so that's really cool. So, um, you know, because this partly is directly from storytelling, your walking tours, mm -hmm. wh what does that look like? Because you used to do it in Edinburgh. Edinburgh yeah. is really old. Everything uh, I would... I presume haven't been, but everywhere that you talk about is probably pretty close. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, have you ever visited Edinburgh? No, no, that's right. You've never had the, the joy yet. Um, Edinburgh is a really beautiful, historical, but compact city. Right. Some of the greatest history is pretty much in a mile by a quarter of a mile space. <laughs> and the challenge of doing a tour in Edinburgh isn't necessarily... Uh, lack of information or size or the amount of tours it's trying to make sure that you're not overloading with stories right. you could effectively take a step and tell a story in edinburgh about a bit of history or something that's happened right it's it's kind of overwhelming yeah no kidding uh calgary is a very modern city yeah so there are challenges there but i've decided to take a different view on it i'm going to do a kilted calgary yeah a scotsman's tale oh. so i'm going to focus on the scottish aspects of calgary right. which are glencoe glenmore yeah, calgary there's, yeah there's so i mean for example not far from where we're sitting used to be new edinburgh right so there's so many areas in Calgary. So I'm going to focus on that. And of course, you know, the Fort Calgary will be a major part of that. Yeah. Scotsman's Hill. A lot of people don't know we have a, a Robert the Bruce statue in Calgary. I did not know we have the, a Robert the, the Bruce statue. The King what? of Scotland. Uh, the, yeah, it's it's all there. So there's a huge wealth of stuff there. Yeah. I also really fancy bringing back my Whiskey and Tales tour. Yeah. Which is a whiskey storytelling tour. Have you talked with some pubs yet? or some? Um, I have spoken to a few, but... I'm, you know, I'm swithering on that one because it might actually be better to be a more of a rather than a tour, more of a standalone event, right? Because there's not a great deal of uh, 
really good whiskey pubs here. Yeah. You know, in Scotland, they're, you know, every second Can't pub is a, a stone. Pro- yeah. yeah. Uh, here, it's a wee bit harder to, to find a good selection. Uh, so I'm still doing the, jug- the juggling in that. And then, of course, my third tour that I'm trying to set up is all because I got a new puppy. And uh, Oh, yeah, he's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to do Tales for Tales. Oh, my God. Which is basically, uh, in Canada, I've noticed a lot of people travel with their pets. Yeah. But they don't necessarily get allowed to do things with their pets. Right. So set up a kind of history storytelling tour. The dogs get walked, the owners get the history. Oh, wow. What a fun idea. Yeah. Would just, you do that down in the park? Or? I would say that would probably be maybe, uh, I, I start from the new central library. It's oh. a beautiful building. So oh, I thought yeah. that'd be a great starting point. For the dog one, it would probably be up by Fort, uh, the fort and down by the river yeah. into some of the islands. Oh yeah. You know, there's some good history there, but also not as frantic and crazy areas for the dogs. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. What a great idea. Damn, son. <laughs> you got, uh, n- now... We've got mutual friends that own Rocky Mountain Sidecar Adventures. That is correct. And I could see you narrating uh, some tales while people like me and and they drive, you know, people around in these sidecars. Well, it's funny you say that. <laughs> <laughs> we have set up, uh, and it, it is, I believe, now live. They are doing a ghost tour. Oh, and fun! They've asked me to narrate. The ghost tour for them. Oh, that's uh, and great. If I remember correctly, it's something like Spooky Calgary by the sidecar, something like that. Don't yeah. quote me on the name. Uh, the idea is it's going to basically take us around a few of the haunted buildings and sites of Calgary. Yeah. I believe there's a couple of stops in some local haunted taverns mm. where there'll be a little bit more in-depth storytelling. And uh, yeah, we're still uh, fully developing the narration for it, yeah. but it is there and it's we'll be test running it, I think, within the next month just to make sure we've got it. Oh. Unfortunately, the, um, the cold snap has really put everyone back. Back. Oh yeah, for you sure. Know, my my own tours are. I was hoping to have them launched in March. Yeah, I may need to put that back a wee bit simply because I've not had the time to get out there and walk. Yeah, and walk. for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the same with the sidecars. They're struggling um, because of the weather. We just can't get out to do test runs on things. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, you could in a couple of them because they have the powered axle in the back, so you could go through the snow if you want. But at minus twenty five, no. Yeah. Well. Um, as our mutual friends were saying, the problem is the cold is horrendous when you're on a bike. You're, yeah. you're a biker yourself, you know oh, what it's yeah. like. But also with all the grit and gravel, it causes a lot of damage to the bikes. Yeah, for sure. Uh, especially with the sidecar, because there's the larger body area to take impacts. Yeah. So they're always very wary of uh, this time of year. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping to have them on the show here in the next month or so. Fantastic. Yeah, that'll be great. Um, so... We talked about stories, like as a, you know, as a generality, you tell stories, you tell a lot of different tales, a lot of different ways. You're going to do some walking tours, going to do some motorcycle tours, going to do some tours with dogs. Um, (laughs) There's going to be drinking. uh, There's going to be non-drinking. Yeah. You know, but you also do corporate stuff. Yeah. You, You touched on earlier. So tell me a little bit about that. You know, it's something that I did a wee bit in Scotland, not to a great deal, but having come to Canada and particularly Calgary. Yeah. I've realized that. I can't sustain myself as a performance storyteller here. Right. Uh, simply because Calgary is a very much a corporate city and, and you know, it's not got a, the arts commitment here. There is a h- good art scene. Yeah. It is phenomenal, but it's not got the investors and it's still a very young art scene. Right. So it means that the challenge there of trying to become like a full-time performer is a little bit more complex. Yeah. So... I looked at what Calgary is, and of course we adapt. We, we we adjust our mindset, and I thought, you know, this is the perfect place for me to go back into a more corporate or business environment. And to be honest, I'm not even... I've looked at a lot of the big boys and kind of went, you know what, they don't interest me as much. Yeah, yeah there could be big bucks there, yeah. you know, if we're honest. Yeah. But they don't interest me as much. I like the guys that are small to medium yeah those are the guys that really have the heart and the commitment and soul and want to see things happening and i've uh, been speaking to a few i'm actually working for a couple of the local breweries oh perfect developing Fair. the <clears throat> story for their staff yeah so that the staff when they're chatting to people can tell the story and also help them develop their brewery tour oh great give them an idea of how it works uh you know, the basics of storytelling, doing workshops with them. Yeah. And uh, I'm loving that because these guys are really passionate. Sure. You know, 
it, it's nice to go into a corporation and know that you're helping a group of people. But what I'm often finding, finding is that the staff and maybe even the CEOs don't necessarily have the passion for some of these larger companies because yeah. they're not, you know, a lot of them have been brought in rather than founding right. the company. And I like the guys that have created their business because they really, like, the love for what they do is there. Oh, yeah. It, it's phenomenal. Well, and they all have a unique point of view, like why they did what they did. If it's a brewery, it's not just about brewing beer. Yeah. Chances are it's like a something deeper in them that you can tease out, right? Yeah, and it's it, it's really nice to work with those guys because yeah. of that reason, you know, there's... And when you get them to tell you their story, you can really see, you know, they might not be able to... It's weird, right? Storytelling is this beautiful craft and it's a very personal human craft. Yeah. And I always say everyone can tell a story. Not everyone can be a storyteller. Yeah. But everyone's got a story to tell and usually that story is your own. Right. So make it a good one. Yeah. And quite often when these guys are telling their story, they're you can feel the passion, but they can't quite get it out right. Right. You know, and, and this is what frustrates them because this is their pitch to yeah. the world. Sure. So I go in and I help them kind of just bring that into a nice balance and, and kind of go through the techniques to use and how to, you know, the flow of a story. And, you know, at the end of it, they've, they're have they doing that kind of 30, 40 second beautiful story. Nice. And all of a sudden it's like, they're just like so happy because now they can tell people their passion properly. Yeah. And, um, you know, the added bonus of the breweries is you often get some free beer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man. Uh, what? So what's your story? Like, if you were to, you know, go back in time, you touched on a little bit when you were at Edinburgh, you were like, oh, this is something I could do. Mm. Why? You know, I um, I was one of those corporate guys. I was a director for a bank. I was a regional manager for stores. Yeah. I was a... Uh, retail manager, uh, recruitment consultant, uh, business development manager, <laughs> yada, yada, yada. I did a lot of blue collar stuff yeah. and hated it. Mm. Absolutely hated it. Um, never sat well with me. Miserable. Just, just not me. Yeah. And then I kind of, I ended up working, oddly enough, uh, after a very messy breakup, I ended up working in an alternative clothing store. Okay. And became a pirate for five years. What? It's another story. Um, <laughs> through that, I kind of took over that store and built it up and then eventually moved on to working in medieval weaponry. Oh, okay. Holy crap. So the historical swords, yeah. uh, all the armour, etc. And loved it. And through that, kind of started to develop this passion for storytelling because I was terrified of audiences. Oh. Like uh, 10 years ago, if you'd asked me to do something like this, even, you know, I couldn't have done it. Really? I couldn't even do this just as a one-on-one. Wow. Uh, doing an audience thing, a public speech, talking, a speech, anything. No, yeah. I would fall apart. Wow. So doing the sales really helped that develop. And I realized when I was doing the weaponry, I was selling the story behind the weapon rather than the, this is the tang, this is the pommel, this is yeah. made out of EN45, you know, all the <laughs> technical stuff. And I kind of wanted to find out more. Yeah. But I also had a friend who owned a tour company and they had been trying to hire me for a while because they obviously saw something. Yeah. And eventually I gave into it. And that's the kind of start of the progression up to oh. me becoming a storyteller. Wow. And you know what? I've been, uh, I, I plunged into it because yeah. I literally went, you know what? I'm quitting my job. And I'm dedicating full time to this. Now. As I was developing it, I just gave up and said, not full time passion and built it up. And it was tough. Wow. It was like, you know, I kind of sometimes wonder if I should have done it that way. But at the same time, I couldn't imagine doing it any other way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Oh, and that's, I, I'll talk more about or ask more about that shortly. Fuck it. I'm going to ask now. Okay, please. Why? Uh, why? It's scary to leave something comfortable behind to pursue a passion. You said you couldn't see yourself doing it the other way, but maybe you shouldn't have done it that way. When you look back on when you took that plunge, what kept you going like on this new adventure? Do you know, I, uh, I often say this to people and it sounds terrible, but if you want to become a self-employed business, if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to follow your passion and dream yeah you need to be really selfish oh 
Uh, and I'm sorry, it's it's one of those things. In the early days, you need to be a little bit selfish. Now, that might be the wrong word, yeah. but it's the word I'll use. Okay. You need to sacrifice a lot to get where you want to be or to get it started. And yeah. then you can start. I mean, I sacrificed relationships, friendships. I sacri- You know, I literally became very focused and, and driven to make sure I got where I wanted to go. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously once I'd got more established, I was able to relax a bit more and allow my life to take over. But I had to be very single-minded and focused on doing it. Yeah. Uh, I l- literally just threw myself into it. Um, I was doing everything performance. So when I say storytelling, I was doing other things. I was doing street performance. I was like a human statue. I tried that. (laughs) I tried doing the bubbles on the street while I was doing storytelling. I was trying to just find my place in the performance world of where I wanted to be. And it very quickly came to me that, you know what? This is what you do and you do it well. Yeah. When I got into storytelling, everyone thought I'd come from a theater background, which I have never done. Yeah. So, I must have had something which was just naturally falling in that direction. And I've tried every so often. I try different things even to this day, uh, like silly photo booths and things like that that are always fun. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. But as I'm doing them, the one thought that goes through my head is, why are you doing this, Callum? Just stick to what you're really good at. (laughs) Right? Stop getting distracted by all the shiny things. Just focus on what you actually do well. Yeah. Wise words. Yeah. Um, so are do you still do stuff with swords and shields and battle stuff <laughs> you know that <laughs> i'm le- asking leading yeah, questions i'm actually uh a member of a viking society in canada uh the vinland awesome. vikings and in calgary we have our local <clears throat> group called vesterine vikings and i am the combat training officer for our group wow so i train everyone uh although to be honest my body is not uh handling it as well i used to be a part of a group in scotland that did a lot of high energy stuff throws and rolls and i'm starting to realize bits of my body aren't working like my shield arm doesn't really work as well as it should Uh and uh yeah it's just it's uh it's all fun well um have you ever heard of clan ranald or combat international no it's the guys that do outlander braveheart okay robin hood um and all these kind of big epic movies they're the extras and all that okay well those are the guys that i kind of did training with and worked with for years and i never got onto any of the shows because my schedule never allowed it oh i should have technically been on outlander yeah but um i i just was never available I, i just never could get give enough time to the group at that time because that was the kind of start of my career into storytelling selfishness yeah. sacrificing uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. so i couldn't really get into that you know uh, oh but, too bad yeah you know what i was i'm too handsome for Outlander. <laughs> 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 you know they already yes, had, yes you are they already had one big bearded <laughs> bald man on there and you that's know true. it was between uh me and i think it's graham mctavish for yeah. that role and he got it you know yeah, it's, it's good of you to let him have that oh, i had to you yeah. know he was struggling yeah that's, <laughs> just, such a good man could you edit that <laughs> <laughs> he's big he will come and yeah yeah uh, <laughs> uh you mentioned earlier you have a new pup yes uh what's his name hamish 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 and, and had what, to be <laughs> yeah what kind of what kind of pup he is um a german shepherd collie cross Uh there may be some snow dog in there as well we're not entirely sure yeah uh but he's getting big yeah he's uh boisterous he's becoming quite well trained oh good we had some uh uh he's got a wee bit of separation anxiety yeah every other training's great but when we have to go out uh you a lot of people here put them in cages yeah like kennel, kennel. Or a kennel a dog when they go out i've never been a fan of it in the past but a Some lot of people have explained it. it here yeah uh he's not keen on it so yeah. we've started to try him out of it when we leave and we just lock him in the basement which is a fully furnished oh. basement so he's not like in a concrete room and uh he seems to be getting a bit better with that oh that's good but uh he's good yeah there's um megan over at dogma is really good if you're yeah I'm not meaning to plug stuff no 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 she's, she's wonderful and the yeah. stuff she does with dogs is amazing. well i've been uh we've been waiting to see how he gets on he started it was like weird because we had one incident where he and i posted for some advice for friends because i know there's a lot of dog owners that have had this problem yeah but he tore up his bed yeah Ever since then, he's been fine. And it made me wonder if it was the bed he didn't like. Maybe. Because I put a blanket in his cage. His huh. ca- I call it a cage kennel. Yeah. And um, he's fine. 
So I'm like, I wonder if it was the bed, right? Because maybe, maybe it was too warm. Because if he's got snow dog, he's he's got that kind of thick, thick coat. Yeah, that he might just have been getting too warm. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> smart dog smart dog <laughs> yeah oh. just like get rid of this <laughs> oh my god how old is he now he's now just over six months he okay. turns seven months on the second of march oh proud papa yeah oh. like, shut up <laughs> <laughs> amazing okay what else do you do for fun What's on Callum's list of things to do for fun that's what's, not work? What's fun? <laughs> uh, you know what? My work is fun. Yeah, okay. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, I love what I do. So I purpose built a studio in my house so yeah. that I literally had a place I could shut myself away from, do recordings, podcasting, radio, etc. Yeah. What I do is is what I do. And I love it. I mean, it. a lot of people are like, wow, you don't do anything else. But when I read a book... Yeah. I'm sorry, it's a book of stories. When I watch a show, quite often I'm looking at the, the stories. Right. We've gone to um, a couple of events together to, you know, like some of the entrepreneur events. And you know, a lot of the time I'm not even listening to them. All I'm doing is monitoring what the person's <laughs> doing yeah. and taking notes. I cannot shut my head off from what I do. Yeah. Um, you know, I like long walks in the country. I like to, <laughs> I like to have a glass of wine when having a, a bubble bath. You know, all the all usual, the, the usual I, things. I, yeah, that's very Scottish. Yeah, I very heard. Scottish. Very yeah. Scot- you know what? Yeah, it's a bit sad. Um, I play badminton. I walk the dog. Yeah. I, I have my beautiful fiance. I, uh, I, I, my work is fun. It's. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm bored. Don't apologize yeah. for that. That's I've amazing. I've tried not to drink too much these days. I've yeah. cut my alcohol consumption oh, because. Good. You know, it's just uh, I'm trying to just live a happy life these days. Yeah, <laughs> nice, awesome. Uh, any last bits of advice for people that are, you know, I, I call them rebels in waiting. Yeah, you know, these people that are just kind of like um, they're almost ready to leave that corporate job to go learn storytelling. And you said you just jumped into it. Oh yeah. What do you have anything else that you would offer as? You know what? Um, I am still to this day the king of procrastination. Yeah. I will let my focus drift left, right and centre onto anything, but quite often it's just another project or it's that juggling thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm still learning the juggle at times. After years and years of doing this, I can I get too easily distracted. Yeah. But what I will say to anybody who's wanting just to change their life, yeah, just do it. Yeah. You know, sorry, I'll use the Shia LaBeouf. Just do it. <laughs> uh, but no, the reality is um, it's scary. Yeah. If you want to take that plunge, it may not work. But the reality is if you have passion, you have a dream and you know in your heart you can do it, then just walk away from your job and yeah. do it. Stop fucking around. Like, don't hold me responsible if it fails. But just <laughs> send your letters to <laughs> Callum yeah. and Storytelling at gmail.com. Is that right? <laughs> yes. I mean, but literally just get out there and do it and i'm a great believer in this worked in edinburgh in scotland for me and it has so far kind of worked here although not as abundantly but you can make money doing anything yeah like literally there's money to be made out there and for example in scotland we have an expression uh and this is a wee bit vulgar so i do apologize in edinburgh you could go out onto the royal mile drop your trousers and do your duty on the street and people would pay you for it. Uh, so literally... Can't wait to go to Edinburgh. Yeah. <laughs> there is money to be made everywhere. Follow your passion, follow your dreams and just do it. You know, because uh, if you keep waiting, then you're going to be, I think uh, the chap uh, who I like watching occasionally is Gary Vaynerchuk. Oh yeah. And he's a great one for saying, you know, because when you're 80, you can't do it anymore. Yeah. Because that's when you're lying in bed wetting yourself. There's no, you know, and you're, you're past it. So just give it a go. If it fails, try something else. If that fails, try something else. If that fails, try something else. Because eventually you'll get the formula right and it'll work. Yeah. Brilliant. Callum Lycan. Thanks so much for coming on the show. You kick ass and are inspiring and devilishly handsome. Oh, thank you. Thank you for uh, enduring my rambles. At least I kind of stayed reasonably focused right? for once. Yeah. Yeah. You kept me, you kept me on a line. Yeah, that's right. That's what I do. <laughs> thank you, Michael. Awesome. Thanks for listening. Our next episode welcomes Rebel Accountant. <laughs> yeah, I said Rebel Accountant. Her name is Caitlin Kirk and she's amazing. You don't want to miss it. Subscribe to wherever you get your favorite podcast. You know, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher, TuneIn. You know, I don't know. You can find us. Just look for Rebel Rebel. 
See you next time.